Today I'll share some of the best food sources of quercetin. So we know that quercetin is a powerful anti-inflammatory, it's a powerful antihistamine, and has great antiviral effects as well. So at the top of the list is capers. So raw capers will provide 233 0.84 milligrams per 100 grams of capers of quercetin. Next on the list is elderberry juice and its concentrate will give 108 milligrams of quercetin. Coriander leaves, and these are raw coriander leaves, 52.9 milligrams of quercetin. Also fennel leaves is on the list. We know that fennel is great for the digestive tract, but also high in quercetin at 48 milligrams, as well as red onion so usually when people talk about quercetin, often extracts are derived of onions and red raw onions will provide 33 milligrams of quercetin. And okra is also on the list. Certain cultures love okra as part of the standard diet at 24 milligrams. Buckwheat is also on the list at 23 milligrams and raw white onions at 21 milligrams. We also have bee pollen, which is interesting, at 20 milligrams per 100 grams. Cocoa, so everybody knows that I'm a big chocolate fan. Dry cocoa powder, unsweetened, at 20 milligrams. So it does have that great anti-inflammatory, just saying. I, sometimes I have to be able to justify my chocolate consumption. A, of course, a high quality chocolate at 20 milligrams of quercetin, which is that great anti-inflammatory, but also also antihistamine effect. Bog whortleberries, I just had to say it. So wild bog whortleberries, <laughs> I can't even say it properly, but these are, again, very much like a blueberry, and they have 17 milligrams of quercetin. Black plums, also at 12 milligrams. Asparagus, so raw asparagus at 12 milligrams. I think most people would cook their asparagus, but raw asparagus, 12 milligrams. Red leaf lettuce also does contain quercetin at 11 milligrams. Fresh oregano, seven milligrams, and red wine. So red wine also makes the list at 2.16 milligrams, but that's okay, a little bit can go a long way. Another interesting fact about quercetin is that in one study it was found that organically grown tomatoes had 79% more quercetin than chemically grown tomatoes. So just, you know, whenever you can go more organic, potentially there is a mechanism that is sort of quenching that quercetin when it's not organic in terms of the pesticide use. So whenever you can go organic, it could be increased increasing your quercetin intake. So today I talked all about the different food sources of quercetin. I hope that you're gonna increase these in your diet, especially the tasty ones, of course. And if you do have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop that in the comment section below. Be sure to share this video as well and give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and also turn on those post notifications by clicking that bell. Everyone has a calling in life and mine is to empower you to live a healthy lifestyle style and of course to do it naturally. Thanks for watching.